So as you know, yesterday was the last GCSE maths paper for the June series of 2024. And the last question seemed to throw quite a few people off. So we've had a few of our students come back and ask us to go through the last question. So I thought that's what we'd do today. Okay, so let's take a look. The diagram shows a circle of radius R centimeters and two regular hexagons. Each side of the larger hexagon, which is the, out, the outer one, A, B, C, D, E, F, that's this one over here. Each side of that hexagon is a tangent to the circle, whereas the, each side of the inner hexagon, which is P, Q, R, S, T, U, is a chord of the circle, right? So P to U is a chord, P to Q is a chord, Q to R is a chord, R to S is a chord, S to T is a chord, T to U is a chord of the circle. Now we're told that by considering perimeters, show that 3 is less than pi, which is less than 2 square root 3. Okay, now I know, I know what you're thinking, right? Where on earth do we start? What on earth is this about? I would say with things like this, go with what you know. I tend to look out for keywords, so I can spot. We're dealing with perimeters over here. Remember, a perimeter is the distance around a, sh around a shape. We also have three different shapes. And if you see in your inequality, we have three quantities over here. So immediately I'm thinking, right, okay, I probably wanna work out the perimeters of all three shapes. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna start with the circle because that'll be the easiest. So if we just move over, the perimeter of a circle, or the, another word for the perimeter of a circle is the circumference. The circumference of a circle is two multiplied by pi times by r. We know that the radius of the circle is r. We were told that in the question, or r centimeters, I should say. So we've got that the perimeter of the circle is two pi r. Let's see if we can come up with the perimeter of the inner hexagon. That's p, q, r, s, t, u. Now, we need the lengths p to q and q to r and r to s, etc., etc. We need those lengths. What I've done is I've drawn a line from the center of the circle going out to each of those vertices. Remember, they're all, they're all points on the circumference of the circle because all of, those, all of those lengths, P to Q and Q to R, they're all chords, right? Which means that their vertices are on the circumference of the circle. Meaning, if we draw a line from the center, I'm gonna call the center of this circle O. So if we draw lines from the center, going out to the circumference at all of those different points, we form a bunch of radii. So O to P is a radii, O to Q, is a radii and the same length, as is O to R, as is O to S, as is O to T, as is O to U. So we've got a bunch of radii there. Remember our goal, we are trying to work out these lengths over here. What I have over here are six equilateral triangles. You may be wondering how are they equilateral triangles? I'm gonna pick out two random triangles. Let's say triangle O, P, Q, so if I draw that there, I'll take any other random triangle, I'll say O, T, S. I know that O to P is R. I know that O to Q is also R. I know that O to T is R. And I know that O to S is R. I can show you that these triangles are congruent because O to P in that top triangle is equal to O to S in the bottom triangle. They're both equal to R. O to Q in the top triangle is equal to O to T in the bottom triangle. Again, they're both equal to R. So, so far I've shown I have two sides that are equal to each other, two corresponding sides that are equal to each other, I should say. And lastly, P to Q must be the same as S to T because they are sides of a regular polygon, in this case, a regular hexagon. So, We've just shown that these two triangles are congruent by the side, side, side rule, meaning they're exactly the same shape and size, meaning that all three corresponding sides are equal and all three corresponding angles are equal, right? So because they're congruent, it means that this angle over here, which is angle TOS, must be the same as this angle over here, their corresponding angles, which is angle P. O, Q. What are those angles? If you go back to the original diagram, right? We, you should know by now that angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. I've just shown you that all of these 
triangles are corresponding to each other. So if we do 360 divided by 6, we get 60 degrees, meaning that this angle is 60 degrees, this angle is 60 degrees. In fact, all of these angles are 60 degrees. If you have a look at this triangle, right? So before I told you that was 60 degrees, you should have realized that this triangle over here was an isosceles triangle. And the base angles in an isosceles triangle must be the same. Well, if this top angle is 60, it means that these bottom two angles must also be 60. And therefore, it's not an isosceles triangle, it's an equilateral triangle. So that's 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees, as are these angles up, up here. If this is an equilateral triangle, if all three angles are the same, it means that all three sides must be the same. So T to S must also be R as is P to Q, as is all other sides of the regular hexagon. So I can come back here and I can say, right, that is R, 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 that is R. So all of the sides of the inner hexagon are also the radius. Right, so that means that the perimeter of the inner hexagon is going to be R plus R plus R, basically six lots of R. Right, so the perimeter is equal to 6R. So we've got the perimeter of the circle, we've got the perimeter of the inner hexagon. Let's now look at the outer hexagon. So once again, I've got a diagram. I've got rid of the inner hexagon just to make it a little clearer. Once again, I've got my center point over here and I've also split up the hexagon into, once again, six equilateral triangles. Let me label the center of the circle O. Right, so we have six equilateral triangles within the larger pentagon. I'm going to draw a perpendicular bisector to cut one of the triangles into half. You'll see why in a second. So if I drop a perpendicular bisector down, hopefully you can see that I now have two right angle triangles. I'm going to label this point M. Also, a quick note, just remember from circle theorems that where a where a tangent meets a radius, so E to D, remember, is a tangent of the circle. So where a tangent meets a radius, O to M is a radius, a 90 degree angle is formed. So we've got a 90 degree angle over here, we've also got a 90 degree angle over there. I'm going to draw that triangle separately. M, by the way, because it's a perpendicular bisector, E to M is a half of E to D. And vice versa, M to D is a half of E to D. So if we can work out M to D, if we double it, we'll get E to D, which is one side of the larger hexagon. So I know that O to M is a radii. We've cut that angle in half, so that's 30 degrees. And I know that this angle down here is 90 degrees. And therefore, this remaining angle must be 60 degrees. I need to work out M to D. M to D is opposite the 30 degree angle that we're given. So we're gonna use a little bit of right angle trig here. So I'm gonna call that opposite. That's my hypotenuse. That is my adjacent. I'm given the adjacent. I know we don't have a numerical value, but we've got it in terms of R. So I'm given the adjacent, trying to work out the opposite. Which trig ratio has opposite and adjacent? Tan. So we're gonna use the tan ratio, i.e. some of you might know it as TOA. So the opposite side is equal to tan of 30 degrees multiplied by R. Tan 30 is square root 3 over 3. So we have root 3 over 3 multiplied by R. Remember, that is just for M to D. E to D is therefore double this, right? So it's two lots of root 3 over 3 multiplied by R. We have six sides because we're dealing with a hexagon. All sides are the same, right? So if I multiply that quantity by six, let's do it up here. So I have six multiplied by two square root three all over three R. We can cross cancel over here. Both six and three are divisible by three. So if you divide six by three, you get two. If you divide three by three, you get one. And 
that leaves us with 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 square root 3r. That is the perimeter of the larger hexagon, right? I've multiplied it by 6 because we have 6 sides. So we now have, if I just jot them down, the larger hexagon has a perimeter of 4 root 3 times 3. So we have our three perimeters. The perimeter of the inner hexagon was 6r, which is less than the perimeter of the circle because it was inscribed within the circle. The perimeter of the circle was 2 pi r. And the perimeter of the circle is less than the perimeter of the outer hexagon. We've just worked out that the perimeter of the outer hexagon was 4 square root 3 multiplied by r. All parts of this inequality are divisible by 2r. So if we divide every single part by 2r, we'll arrive at the answer. 6r divided by 2r gives us 3. 2 pi r divided by 2r gives us pi. And 4 root 3r divided by 2r gives us 2 square root 3. And there you have it, your answer. Hopefully you were able to get the answer in the exam. If you didn't, don't worry. It was quite a difficult question. It was quite challenging but at least you know how to do it now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.